Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, one of our YouTube videos, and uh, we're taking a break from reptiles. We're meeting some mammals. I'm here with Kevin Bacon. Uh, Kevin Bacon is blind. He was born that way. Uh, he spends all his time with John Hamm, his best friend, and uh, their best friend, Fiona the Fox. So, an interesting story there. So, uh, let's meet some mammals. on tour a couple of years ago. This is one of the most popular animals uh, that people wanted to see alongside uh, an animal we're going to see in a little bit. Uh, this is Artie. Artie is a uh, three-banded armadillo, so they are one of the, uh, they're smaller than the six-banded, uh, and so they get their name uh, because that's what people call them. But they're basically a little pokeball. Uh, they are armored. They uh, have these little claws, and when they walk, they kind of tiptoe, and you can see his See his eyes there? Very prehistoric looking creatures. Like it's kind of like a mammal version of an ankylosaurus, but a lot smaller. And uh, they like to dig. They like to uh, find grubs and all sorts of stuff in the ground. And under they spend a lot of time burrowed underground. Uh, this is kind of their little little dance, and they'll curl up in a ball. And these are one of the only ones that can curl up in a ball. So most people think that all of them can. Most of them can't. So this is a groundhog, uh, of course, famous for. Uh, the Bill Murray movie, as well as uh, seeing their shadow. Uh, I've never actually held one of these before, so this is kind of a new new experience for me. Uh, I never know what I'm going to experience when I do these. But uh, groundhogs are found uh, throughout North America, right? Ah, no nibbles, no bites. You can, give, you can give cuddles, but no bites. There you go. And uh, so they do go underground in the winter and emerge and point to Tony Phil sees his shadow, then we're going to have six weeks more in winter. Uh, they're really cute, and they're really soft, which I wasn't expecting. Like, a lot of rodents are kind of coarse-haired, but he's, uh, he's very soft, which is, which is neat, and very cute. So this is Lola, a giant Flemish rabbit. Uh, these are not actually found in the wild. They were created in a lab in Belgium and uh, basically genetically engineered to be big for their fur and their meat. So, you know, oftentimes rabbits do, especially it's popular in Europe. So you would not find these guys uh, in the wild, but unfortunately they are uh, one of the most abandoned animals and the, the most abandoned pet rabbit because uh, people get them for Easter. They get them when they're little and cute and don't understand that these can grow to 24, 34, 35 pounds, and they kind of just sit there. They have the energy of other bunny rabbits. So uh, very soft and cuddly, but uh, you know, they need a lot of space, they have a big appetite, and they're big bunnies. And so unfortunately, they end up abandoned quite frequently. So this is one of those examples I talk about all the time with reptiles, like how people get things like cicadas, or tegus, or monitors, or iguanas, or boas, and not do their homework, not realize what they're getting into with size when they see the baby. Same thing can happen with mammals, like the Flemish giant. So one of the uh, cool experiences I've had uh, from doing a wildlife festival is getting to work with striped skunks. Uh, I've, I've worked with three of them and uh, really remarkable animals and really misunderstood. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about doing those tours because I got to work with animals I don't normally work with, but also just to educate people about the importance of skunks. Now obviously, flower here is descented, so I'm not gonna get that nice blast of, uh, of skunk smell, but People who keep them as pets, again, not a good idea and illegal in a lot of places. These guys are mischievous. They are destructive. Um, when I babysat one of the skunks when I was on a little race tour, we kept it in a bathroom and it like pried the baseboards off. Uh, we know of someone who had a pet skunk that uh, it got out of its uh, pen for the day and they came home and the skunk was poking its head out of their brand new mattress that it had dug a burrow into. So they will get into stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they're kind of considered a pest in some places. 
because they will get into your garbage. They will get and dig under your your uh, your fence and do all sorts of stuff. Get in your gardens, but they eat a lot of bugs. They eat a lot of pests. Uh, so they're actually very helpful. The important thing is to just give them space. They will let you know. No skunk is going around just being like, hey, you know what I feel like doing? Spraying everything. They only have so much spray, and so if they use it all, then they don't have any to defend themselves. So they will do a little stomp. They show off their stripe in their tail. That's a warning to leave them alone. And uh, as a last resort, they will spray. So give them space, train your dogs to be skunk aware, and you won't have to worry about that beautiful, beautiful skunky smell. Come here. I'm right here. You want me to get you, don't you? You want me to get you? Yeah, yeah of course you do. Hi, right, see Jason? Wanna go see Jason? So this is a coat of Mundi, one of the other mammals here, uh, having a quick little visit. Uh, they are found in South America as well as Mexico. Uh, you will often see them around resorts and places like that and being fed. They should not be fed, guys. Wildlife is wild uh, and uh, they should remain that way. But a very cute and furry creature and popular as pets in some places, but again, not a good choice for a pet. What's in the con? Uh, hoppers, blueberries, and um, honeydew. Some of our favorite stuff. So fruit and meat. <laughs> and where did she come from? She was a cruelty case and illegal ownership case from uh, Western Ontario. So they're illegal to have in Canada? They are. These guys are from South America. And I know they're popular in places like uh, Texas and stuff, and I've seen them in Mexico in the wild, yeah. but... You'll have different types of coatings, so this is a golden mountain coat of Mundi, so she'll usually sleep, or they're usually found up in the mountains, the black ones are found on the beaches. Okay. They're very smart animals. They are, just like raccoons. They are kind of like a long-nosed raccoon. Same family. Yeah. You see them at the resorts, the beach ones, and they like... Right beside the signs that say, don't feed them. Oh, yes. You ever toss them? <laughs> Unfortunate things. And that's one of the challenges with wildlife, isn't it? Is the fact that uh, their actual diet and what people feed them, they're opportunistic. So, yeah, they'll eat pizza and garbage, but they shouldn't be. So when you're at a resort or people have them as pets and they don't feed them properly, that ends up being a, a health issue for them. Exactly. So a lot of them can actually go into kidney and liver failure. That's the most common one. And they can actually get cavities. So that's what raccoons are often... Uh, uh, that's what we often find in older raccoons is they have a lot of dental issues because of the amount of sugar that people feed them or what they find in garbage. So we try and feed them mostly what they would naturally find in the wild. Uh, so anything from rodents to fruits and vegetables, uh, eggs, things like that. That's the natural diet for these guys. And this is kind of natural behavior as well, isn't it? It would be foraging and trying to find it exactly. and dig it out of... Out of uh... You know, yeah. things like burrows and such. Yeah, and it's good enrichment for her too to, to actually work for some of her food. So keeps her busy mentally and physically, which is good for her because she's not a very young coat of money. She's actually quite old. So if they're, say, I was to go in there, they would react completely different. Okay. They're very particular about their people. Right. So like, look at this right now. He's just toying with them. Yeah. You might as well have a little pup, right? Yeah. But uh, say you went in there, they both be very suspicious. Like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what he's about. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You want to.
So uh, I am getting to hang out right now with uh, Fiona, the uh, Marble Arctic uh, Red Cross, uh, Fox Cross. Uh, so she's actually a rescue from a fur farm, a uh, fur farm that uh, was not caring for their animals properly and uh, had some concerns. So beautiful, beautiful animals. Again, people do keep foxes as pets, not in Alberta, and I don't think they're legal here either. But, uh, you know, people look at wildlife and they think, <laughs> she disappears, and they think, oh, it's like a dog or it's like, a, a, you know, having a cat. But wildlife is wildlife and, you know, the instincts have not been bred out of them. So even though Fiona is a nice fox with a lot of people, there is always a possibility that she is going to dislike you. I met her when she was three years old, so, or three months old. So I'm not doing any, you know quick moves I'm not doing anything to startle her I'm letting her be and I'm just sitting and she's saying hi to me and that's the important thing so uh, the other fox which is not coming in the room right now which is fine is Felix and he is a uh, also marble he's a red and silver and uh, he has epilepsy so now these animals are able to be released into the wild um, so but they're great ambassadors and that's that's an important thing. You know, the opportunity, especially with kind of the programs that the keepers do and that little rays do is, you know, getting close to nature. I firmly believe that, you know, connecting with them on this level is, is what will ensure that, you know, people want to care for nature and want to protect animals and not just view things like foxes and other animals as pests, but as animals that are uh, an important part of our ecosystem. Right, Fiona? Thank you. 